What's up, y'all? Rambler and the Dusty is in the back. We are driving through the mountains back east, about 150 miles. It's a fun one because it's all like this the entire way. 150 miles and we've been in it about, oh, 50, between 50 and 60 miles. I'd say about, yeah, about 50 and 60 miles into it so far. Everything is going good. Just wanted to give you guys a little look-see. This is beautiful California backwoods. Sure is beautiful. Dusty doesn't like traveling. He's traveled a lot. Shit, he started traveling when he was <laughs> Just six months old, we went from Delaware, drove all the way to Seattle. Yeah, he's been driving his whole life. We've went so many places. But sure is a perilous drive. I did this last time at night. And it was, I was like, yeah, I'm not doing that at night again. There's one part back behind us that is literally one road. It's like um, Middle East somewhere, you know, where there's like just one, enough room for one car. And what they do is there's a stop sign or light and they stop all the traffic from one way, one direction or the next. And uh, fortunately for me this time it was green. So I didn't have to wait at all. Really rare. And there's, there's just one of them. Uh, that's just in a really, I don't know what they're doing there. There's a lot of construction and like trees. I don't know what's going on, but I know that it's, for some reason, they got it locked down to one lane. I don't know if they can't keep the other road because of road slides, maybe. That's what happened was a road, I'm thinking, was a mudslide. It's the uh, educated guess is that it would be a mudslide. And so they're trying to repair it, but they can't. Because, you know, you're in this area, so you, they're going to have to redirect the road. But, till then, it's one lane traffic. Pretty crazy. I've been to drive in third gear a lot, just because it's better on the engine. Different different type of gear kind of like a climbing gear not going fast though you can't bring third gear up over 45 really so go back and forth with it I'm always paying attention to my that hot and cold meter it's, for some reason it's I don't know it's like you give me something to worry about, now you have to worry about all of it. So, <laughs> really, I pay attention to all of the gauges. And that's because I have to. But we're doing good. We're about over a third of the way there, and the engine's still not even hot. It's, it's warm, you know, like halfway. She gets a little bit hotter when I start going up mountains or whatever and then as I'm going down them and not revving the engine up it's it cools right back down so she's healthy 210 211,000 uh, is that a nine I'm gonna put my glasses on to see what how many miles that you know, I'm at let's find out she's a warrior though I tell you what I named her Shelly it's the name of this car and we are at 211,907. So by the time we get where we're going, we'll be at 212,000 miles on the vehicle. And I, I mean, she drives the same way she did when I first got her. Little different, you know, like as far as going up straight hills and, you know, it's 
if she's not good if you let her like go real slow and then you have to speed up on a hill. You know what I mean? But that's the only time like that I've noticed anything different in the in the drive and I'm pushing the pedal is when I'm going. If I if somebody makes me slow down or something makes me slow down on the on an incline and then I gotta get back up to speed it's the engine don't like that so I try not to let that happen the best I can right here there's lots of rock fall you gotta be real careful rocks will just come flying down that side of that mountain and just smash into you you're you ain't got no chance you gotta be very careful it's you're taking your, your life in your hands when you drive around here no doubt about it But that's Northern California, baby. And I'm from the 80s, so it's all good. Somebody told me to put that on a t-shirt. <laughs> I think that's a great idea. Misty James suggested that. Hope you're doing well, Misty. And Johnny Gobble. Ryan Upchurch. Of course, Uncle Will, even though he don't like me, I still respect him. I don't have any reason not to. And everybody. Everybody who's involved. Both sides who hate each other. You ain't done nothing to me. So, I ain't gonna take sides. I find good things in every one of you that I've noticed and I've had the pleasure to meet. Including Johnny Gobble. He's a good man. He goes to work. Anybody that goes to work every day and you want to talk crap about them, I'll take up I'll take up an ass whooping for Johnny Gobble. Personally. Anybody wanna whoop Johnny Gobble's ass, they can whoop my ass. He's a working man. He needs to work. I'm a working man too, but also an orphan, been on the street since I was 10 years old, and I ain't met a man that could whoop my ass. Not one-on-one. -on -one. Not that they ain't there. I just ain't met him yet. People want to look at the facade of Joshua, what, of what Joshua shows them. Joshua don't show them everything. If I was an orphan, and I know that You'll think I'm weak until I hit you in the fucking throat. And I don't care how big you are. You will go to your knees and I will save your life by cutting the hole in your fucking throat. And sticking a fucking piece of straw in there. So I'm not a little big dude, but I got a stretch of 6'2 and I'm 5'10. Which means you'd think I'm going to be far away. But I'm going to be just in, close enough to crush your fucking windpipe. damn old to be fighting. I fought when I was younger. I enjoyed it. Nobody in my family had to fight in a, in a bad neighborhood in Spokane, Washington when I was a kid. But if they fucked with my family, there's hell to pay. But I left home at a young age and unfortunately left those siblings of mine to fend for themselves. I didn't realize it at the time, but they, they went through hell when I left. I left at a very young age, 10 years old. But I already had a reputation by 10 years old. But I was never a criminal. I never will be. More like a knight. But I'm on the other side. I'm not on the on the right side of stuff. I was an orphan. But I sure as hell don't blame nothing on it and I don't whine about it. I don't make fucking excuses for it. It's simply there as an explanation of why and something that uh, you have to know 
what you're going through before you can fix it, before you can grow. You have to know you're lost before Jesus can find you. Don't think that anybody ever finds Jesus. People always say, oh, I found God. No, you didn't. God finds people in the dark. You have to be receptive and you have to... It's, it's hard to explain, but God finds us. We do not find God. <laughs> we couldn't find God if our life depended on it, which it does. Our very soul depends on it. Which is way more important than your life. Your soul. You gotta get right with Jesus. And that really means three things. Knowing that you're a sinner. That's number one. Knowing that to, to enlighten upon that is to know that you can't do anything by yourself. You are lost. You are like a sheep and you are in the forest by yourself. There's no shepherd. You are lost. You have to know that. You have to know that you're a sinner. You have to know that with your own works, you can't do anything. You're doomed. You were sold and before you were born. Adam and Eve sold our soul. You think people are so simple-minded because they think, oh, I sold my soul to the devil or he sold his soul to the devil or anyone ever. You need to read the Bible. The Bible teaches us that every single soul belongs to God. You couldn't sell your soul. You don't own it. God owns your ass. And it's either going one or the other. You're serving the devil, yourself, or you're serving God. And let me tell you something. I'm not, there's not, I, I doubt very much that there's even two people who know what I'm talking about on this video. Who really know. And they would have to be fundamentally independent, Bible-believing Baptists to know. Because it's the truth. It's the whole Bible. Most churches don't teach the whole Bible. It's unfortunate. But why do you think there were so many breaks in the Christianity in America? Do your research. There's so many First Baptists, Second Baptists, Southern Baptists, Northern Baptists. They're all jokes. None of them are Baptists. Not one. They all ignore the word. They want to be uh, people pleasers. The Bible talks about it. All through it. You don't... <laughs> you won't... <laughs> you won't find God there. You, he, they may be... I'm not saying that God can't use them to save souls. Sure. That's an awesome thing in itself. Yes, I agree. But... To grow with Christ? You see, when you become a Christian, if you ever obtain Christianity in your life, you will, and if you have, then you were and will be a new creature. You're basically like a baby. So you wouldn't expect a baby to get up and walk and talk and go have a job and pay rent and do all the stuff he needs to do to, to survive and be responsible and have responsibility. No. No, not until they're fucking 18 years old are they even expected to be able to do that type of thing. And you expect a baby Christian to all of a sudden pick up Christianity? No, it's a walk. You have to learn to walk with God. And that is not easy. That is selfless. That is listening to the word and doing what he says and getting up early just to give reverence to your Lord and Savior who saved your soul and owns your soul. You don't own your soul. God does. God owns every soul. I don't care if they're in hell. I don't care where they are. God owns every single soul that was ever created. Period. You don't own your soul. You're not going to be able to sell it. Nobody's going to take it. Nobody can possess you. Now, if you're unsaved, that's 
that's a gray area. I don't know about possession and demonic things that can happen to unsaved people. I haven't researched that in my lifetime, and I am saved. I know I'm saved by the grace of God, by the blood of Christ, by the very blood of Jesus Christ, who lived 2,000 years ago and lived a perfect life without any sin. That man went 40 days and 40 nights without eating. Let's see any one of us go 40 hours and then be tempted by anything, let alone the devil himself. Can you imagine? And, and you may not know, but Jesus did not rely on his own strength. No, sir, or ma'am, nope. He relied on the Holy Ghost, which you and I can rely on right now. We have the keys to sin. If you don't want to sin, if you don't want to smoke, if you don't want to do drugs, if you don't want to womanize, if you don't want to be slothful, if you don't want to sin, you don't have to. You see, an unsaved person has to. They wouldn't even cross their mind. But a saved person who is conflicted and has Jesus in their heart, they can. Anyways, that's my Bible lesson for the for the day for everybody. Got to have Jesus. If you want to find a real church, fundamentally independent, Bible-believing Baptist, I'll explain to you what that means. Fundamentally independent. That means that, just like it sounds, they are fundamentally away from anything independent. Okay, they are independent of anything on this earth. They are not of anything, they are not controlled, they are not a part of, of anything. Fundamentally independent, okay? The second phrase is Bible believing. That's exactly how it sounds as well. They believe the entire Bible. You have to understand that there's entire theologies out there. Now theology is, is, is a big fancy word for the study of, of the Bible, of, of God's word. Okay, that's theology. There's three types of theology in America. And that's just in Christian. That's just Christian. So there's people out there that believe in Christ, believe in the blood, but they don't believe the same. They, some of them believe, there's one, they believe that the more you get spiritual, the more you get, uh, the closer your walk is with God, basically, the more that you will understand the word. Okay? And then the word will be more clear to you as, a, as, a, as an individual. The problem with that theory, in my opinion and the word of God's opinion, is God plays second fiddle to no man. Look it up. He doesn't play that game. So, who's on this earth right now to tell any of us who of us is more spiritual than the other? Because anybody could just say, hey, I'm more spiritual than you, and and therefore I understand what this verse means, and it means this, and you have to believe that because I'm more spiritual. But that is false, and the reason you can prove that is because it puts God second. God plays second fiddle to no man. And so, um, <clears throat> that's, that's one entire college of so-called Christianity teaches this. And it's a false teaching. Okay? Now there's another one that's false. And they teach that half of the Bible literally is God's word, but the other half is literally man's word. Okay? The problem with that theory, again, according to the word of God, is God plays second fiddle to no man. Period. There is no, there's no exception in this, okay? 
So if half of the Bible is is correct in, in God's word, and half of the Bible is not in its man's word, who on earth is here to tell us the difference? It can only be man, because Jesus is up on the right hand of God. Holy Ghost is here, but he can't speak to us. Okay? And God is in, in heaven. Okay? So there's nobody on earth that can tell us what is and what is not God's word. So again, that's God playing second fiddle to man who says, okay, this sounds like God's word, this sounds like man's word, so I'm going to say that that's man's word. Well then, boom, you already failed. Because now you're, you're, you're putting yourself ahead of God. No. And what the third one teaches is what I learned is every jot and tittle, okay, is an is a easy way to put it. Basically, we believe everything from every comma, every period is important, every statement, everything. The, the, like, the, like, the, uh, like, like, for instance, when Adam was created, he was created with life already. He was created with as a 30-year-old man. Okay, he wasn't, he didn't grow as a baby. He was all created at once, okay? And so God, he can create the earth and human beings and whatever he creates, he can create them with age, age. So the earth could be billions of years old, but God created it in seven days, okay? And those days, and when he created them, they had already had life like Adam. He was already a 30 year old man. How did he get to be 30? If God can't create, I can't, there's a specific word for what I'm talking about, but basically God, when God creates, he can create something as an adult, okay? And it, it's already, and, and the same thing with the earth, because as you know, especially if you know the earth, that the, that, um, the earth is alive. Look at that river, that's alive, baby. That river's alive. And those trees, those, that grass, those, every, this is all alive, man. As I, and so God created it. Sure, he created it. it. It took, he created it as it is. And it, and it seems, you know, according to the scientists, that it's billions of years old. But God created that billion years in one day. And so that's Christianity. People don't understand true Christianity. They're not taught. Because they don't go to a fundamentally independent Bible-believing Baptist church because they are there's so many breaks from that church because there's uh, because the devil because of uh, because here's the thing what the devil does is he does not disclaim he does not say that the Bible's false he questions it what the devil says is yea hath God said that's what he said to Eve so what did he do he cast it doubt Okay, so she questioned it. And she's like, oh, wait a minute. Maybe that is good for me because now I'll be knowledge and I'll know right from wrong. Well, little did she know that was a horrible thing to do and for it to go through. Now, luckily for us as humans, God hid the tree of life. He did not allow them to find or to, to eat of the tree of life. And why is that a good thing? Well, let me tell you why. Because had we have eaten of the tree of life, Adam would still be alive. You understand? <laughs> and he would have had kids. And it would have been all those people would have never died. Okay. <laughs> because they were immortal. So they couldn't die. Okay? So it was the tree of life. You understand? So they would have been stuck in that sin, in our, the sin we're in, what we're living through, they would have been stuck in this for all time. Think about it. People think, oh, why didn't we eat from that tree too? Well, it's a good thing we didn't. Because then God would never have been able to send his son, himself, to earth to live a sinless life and to prove, because it can be done. Mankind is, a, is, is the most... If we're inherently sinful. You got to understand. People say, "Oh, there's good people out there." No, there isn't. You got to watch everybody. Everybody. 
My pastor put it good one time. They asked him, Pastor, why do you lock up everything? Why do you keep the cabinets locked? And he said, to keep the honest people honest. Think about that. To keep the honest people honest. Why? To keep the honest people honest, baby. You gotta pay attention. You gotta look into it. You can't just listen to what people say about things. You have to have a personal relationship with Christ and you have to study it. And of course, I say these things and I'm just like everyone else. I'm a sinner. I don't study. I don't give my reverence. I'm selfish. I'm a I'm the worst because I know better. So actually, and 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 and, and you want to get technical about it, the word of God tells me that I'm going to be in more trouble because the Bible literally says that it is better to know or to not know the truth than to know the truth and not do it. Listen to that. It is better to not know the truth than to know the truth and not comply with it. You understand? And so that has a lot to do with my situation because I am a, uh, a sinner saved by grace. Okay, I'm saved by grace. I don't go to church. You know, I, I lost my faith in church because churches have lost their way and they're no longer preaching the word of God. Now they're preaching what is pleasing to people. Now they now the pastor talks about what what makes everybody smile and happy. Not not a real church. A real church said should convict your heart. You should listen to the word of God. And you should hear the word of God, and you should say, "Whoa, I am a horrible person. I do need to get right with God." That's what the word of God should do to each and every one of us. That's what a real church does. A real pastor's not scared to tell you that you're a low-down sinner and you need to wisen up and do God's way because ultimately it's better to do things God's way because everything God wants you to do is actually good for you. It's actually the right thing to do. <laughs> it's not, none of it is going to hurt you. Not a little bit of it. Not even a little bit. God says, try me. You don't believe me? God literally says and and said, try me. You don't, you don't, you don't believe it. Pick up the word of God, give me my reverence, do what I tell you. Uh, it, as, as the far as the word of God is concerned, listen to it, adhere to it, and 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 God will take care of you. Just no two ways about it. No two ways about it. God will bless you like crazy. But here's the thing. Right now, we have to understand that God himself blessed bad things to happen. Like, in my opinion, the presidency of the United States of America in 1920, or in 2020, not 19, in 2020 was stolen. And I believe that it had the blessing of God to be stolen and to, to do all this harm. Why? Because in the Bible it says that the world has to become the, the, this big uh, area. Like it talks about the biggest body of, of land in the world. And it talks about it being a great whore. Well, that's America, baby. It's America. So with the, with the most diverse people all connected and, and coming together. Sure, you got bigger uh, areas in, in Asia... But they're not, they're not populated like it is in America. They're, they don't have the people like they do here in America. Uh, with the diversity. And, and that's what the Bible talks about. Everybody's coming together. and They have a one world religion. Stuff like that. That has to be America. And so that can't happen with righteous people leading the way. So the righteous people, in my opinion, Donald Trump, have to get attacked. By everybody and it's and they've got to lose ultimately because Jesus can't come back unless all this happens so it all unfortunately has to come to pass and because it has to come to pass we have to live through it and and it's <laughs> it's gonna be a bumpy ride you know but 
nobody's perfect. As long as you wake up in the morning, you can get clean. You ever notice that? No matter what you did the night before, no matter how much you partied the, and how long you did it for, when you finally are, are waking up and you're done and you got that on you still and you take the shower, and as soon as you wash it off, you feel like a different person. It's, and, and it's because you are. You've been washed clean, especially if you're a Christian. Because if you're a Christian, your sins are forgiven forever. You're, you don't have to ask for forgiveness ever again. You ask for forgiveness once. Now, you can apologize to God for living and, and, and running his name through the mud. And you can ask him to, to give you strength. But be careful. Because when you ask for strength, God gives you... Uh, he doesn't just give you strength. Like humans, we want to ask for strength. And we expect it just to be, oh, God magically gives us strength. No. He'll put a trial in your life. He'll make your life harder. And make you stronger. <laughs> no joke. You ever notice how somebody goes through something real traumatic? They either get defeated by it, or they become stronger for it. It's one of the two. It's never in the between. So needless to say, everybody, I was real close to becoming a minister, but I fell. And I have to own up to my mistakes, and I can't, I don't have, I no longer have the blessing of God to be a pastor. Now, I can spread the word of God, and you can hear it, and you can feel it, and it can affect your life through God, not me. But God uses his word because it's alive. So when I speak God's word, it's alive and it has a life of itself. It has nothing to do with me whatsoever. When you speak the word, that's why God says speak the word of God. And that's why pastors shouldn't hold back from different sermons because their congregation will cry about it. And that's what's going, that's why you have so many different churches because the the, the, the deacon or the, you know, the guy that, usually it's the guy that has the most money and he contributes the most to the church and that should tell you is all you need to know right there because that guy's not doing God's will, he's doing his own will he wants to go to a church he wants to spend his money, he wants to get saved, he wants to feel God but he wants to do it his way well guess what God doesn't honor that because, again, God doesn't play second fiddle. He doesn't do it. It doesn't work. Sorry. He created us. We didn't create him. We didn't have any doing in our own creation. We can't create anything. Sure, we may be able to, you know, invent things and stuff like that, but you do me a favor and invent a human being that's 30 years old. Do that out of dirt, and I will say you're doing something, okay? You don't get to take God's creation and then tweak it and then clone it and think that you're creating anything. You're not. You're just cloning. You're just copying God's work. That's all these scientists are doing. They're copying God's work. They, they don't have anything of their own. And so they can't give reverence to God because that would take their pride away. That would take their uh, their accomplishment away. That would give their accomplishment right back where it belongs. With the word of God. And with God, not the word of God. With God, sorry. Because all glory be, goes to God. And man, I always want all the glory. Anyways, we made it through that little section of mountain area. Now we're in a little flat area for a minute little valley as they call them and we'll sip we got about another 57 57 miles to go I'm gonna cut this video out I'll make a short out of it and then there'll be a longer version obviously 30 minutes <laughs> have a good one peace out